thank you, Mr. Rajpaksha, for that very insightful speech indicating Sri Lanka's great potential surrounding the five different hubs and our ability to complete, sorry, compete at a global level on many different areas. I would now like to warmly welcome Mr. Hussein Yusuf Ali, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Hamas Holdings PLC. In 2001, Mr. Yusuf Ali assumed responsibilities as CEO of Hamas, the diversified conglomerate which serves local and international customers. In 2003, as Chairman of Hamas, he was also instrumental in leading the company to achieve one of the most successful listings on the Colombo Stock Exchange. Previously, Mr. Yusuf Ali served as the Managing Director of the Fast Moving Consumer Goods, or FMCG business, where Hamas emerged as a dynamic local competitor in the face of strong multinational competition. Mr. Yusuf Ali is involved in several industry associations, including the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, where he serves on the committee. He is also a member of the Board of Management of the Postgraduate Institute of Management. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Electronics from the University of Sussex, UK. Please welcome Mr. Hussein Yusuf Ali to outline the private sector role in Asia's next knowledge hub. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Gotabe Rajabaksa, the Secretary of Defense and uh, Urban Development, Mr. Ajit Timavad Kabral, Governor of the Central Bank, Sanjeev Virwana, and other organizers, and uh, distinguished uh, invitees. Um, my uh, task today uh, has been to spell out the private sector vision that we see ahead of us, uh, but, and after that very uh, insightful and very inspirational speech, uh, by Mr. Rajapaksa, I think the, some of what I had to say may seem quite uh, uh, basic, but I will try to take you through, and this is not a private sector vision, this is really a vision that uh, I have put together from uh, the various uh, government uh, authorities and also the deliberations that I have been involved in uh, in the chamber and other associations, and of course our the experience of our, of our own company. So, um, from a macro perspective, and you can find this uh, in, the, in the BOI where you get a much more detail about this, there are, they cite 10 reasons why you should invest uh, in Sri Lanka. So, of course, the, I'm sure the government, governor will talk more about the economy. I think Sri Lanka's growth rate is amongst the fastest in uh, Asia, South Asia, and perhaps even the world um, uh, at some point. And I think in terms of our per capita income, we are now coming out uh, from, from a, a fairly basic standard of living and are going to see uh, exponential changes in the way uh, life, life, uh, life, is, life carries on here. The, Infrastructure, of course, is something that we, all, we, can all, we can all see for ourselves, the amazing changes in infrastructure even over these last years. I mean, you can travel to Gaul in an hour, you can go to airport in 15 minutes, and there are so many other uh, aspects of this that really enhance commerce and uh, change, uh, are really game changers. And of course, the quality of life. I think that was, that was uh, focused a lot in the last address. Uh, I mean, I myself, I, I came back, uh, uh, the local healthcare system essentially takes care of uh, uh, Sri Lankan people. Uh, much of the inpatient care happens in uh, government hospitals, uh, although there has been some shift uh, in, uh, due to the private hospitals coming here and, and a lot of outpatient care also gets treated there. But going forward, I think Sri Lanka has an, an amazing potential for this industry. Medical tourism, as many of you may know, is a major uh, revenue earner uh, for countries like Singapore and Malaysia who have fashioned their entire strategies 
around this. We only so far see medical tourism coming from, uh, coming from the Maldives. But I think in time to come, this could be a major uh, industry here in Sri Lanka. For the local people, private hospitals are coming up, not only in, uh, in Colombo, but I think by 2020, you're going to see good quality private hospitals in most of the major towns in Sri Lanka. And these private hospitals will be run. They will offer you most uh, of your health care healthcare needs. And um, um, they, uh, Sri Lankans won't need to go overseas anymore to get uh, anything done. We have some of the best doctors in the world. And with, with the hospital network increasing, and I'm sure teaching hospitals will be a part of that, especially now with uh, private medical colleges, I think, also being encouraged by the government. I think we are going to see a far higher degree of healthcare that we have seen in the past. The government is also keen to um, uh, have a certain amount of self-sufficiency in, uh, self in our uh, manufacture of uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, this is an industry where today most of the pharmaceuticals we consume actually come from India and uh, uh, there is now a push to have uh, some amount of this manufactured locally and I think there's tremendous prospects not only to cater for Sri Lanka but also for the African and uh, you know other other countries in the subcontinent so the point is to do all this one of the biggest issues that we face is the lack of specialized knowledge if you're trying to develop a pharmaceutical industry you can't do that without high quality uh, research and development uh, uh, resources or if you're trying to uh, uh, develop other uh, other areas I mean even even an area like having uh, insurance coverage for everybody needs experience and this is I think a lot of this experience resides in Sri Lankans who are uh, working and you know uh, who are living abroad so so you know it will require some of that expertise to come back to Sri Lanka for us to develop this, this industry. Leisure is something uh, where Sri Lankans are very good at it. Uh, I think it's in our genes. But uh, uh, Sri Lanka so far as a premier leisure destination has obviously not been able to meet its potential because of the conflict that we have had. But going forward, I think this is one of the key industries that is going to emerge. I hope by 2020 we will measure the success of our uh, uh, leisure strategy, not by the number of tourists that come in this country, but by the number of dollars that we uh, earn from this very, very uh, important industry. We're going to see, I think, many things change in this industry. Uh, international hotel chains are going to change the bar and there's going to be a very, uh, a very big difference and a very difference in the quality of uh, services and products that are offered. There are going to be um, other developments like um, uh, the, uh, you know, the villas where, where you get overseas, you can go and you can take a timeshare or you can buy a villa or, you know, so that, that's, that is tremendously uh, uh, popular and uh, uh, Sri Lanka as a destination to have a second home or to have a villa as an investment is going I think is going to be very attractive and there are there are other uh, efforts to to develop the marinas and to develop the whole you know take advantage of Sri Lanka not only from a uh, transport hub, hub but also from uh, you know for for yachts and sailing and other leisure destinations uh, leisure activities Sri Lanka could, could have a lot of uh, uh, advantages. And, and one of the things most tourists say when they come here is that, you know, that there's not enough to do. You come to Sri Lanka, you book into a hotel, but what do you do after that? I think especially in Colombo and Gaul and other places like this now, we are seeing, we are seeing much more variety to the tourists. And this is what makes uh, tourists come and spend their dollars and uh, uh, it's important for them to have that, uh, have those opportunities to have a, a more uh, 
holistic holiday. Um, uh, also things like Ayurvedic spas. We have seen how countries like, uh, well, states like uh, Kerala and also other destinations have uh, leveraged on, on the uh, experience that tourists want to, you know, to get pampered, to have, a, to have a really relaxed holiday. So I think Sri Lanka again has, I mean, we have a heritage in this. So it is how we can affect and how we can deliver this heritage in a, in a premier and a high-end manner to tourists that will make a big difference. I think there was a lot said about apparel. This is obviously one area where Sri Lanka has had uh, a fair degree of success in the international arena. We have a world-class apparel industry. I think, I think they, they are looking to um, hit $5 billion by 2020. But so far, we have been positioned mainly as a manufacturing uh, destination. I mean, we, we manufacture and export apparel. But going forward, I think they have, more and more, some of the big firms are trying to capture more of the value that, that gets done to a garment. You know, a, a garment that they export at $4 where all the, the, you know, the fabric is specified, the design is given, and whatever. I think in time to come, by 2020, Sri Lanka could have uh, its own design capability, it could have its own fabric capability, and you know, uh, it could be uh, a, total, a total solution provider for someone seeking to buy apparel. Also recently, the government has uh, gazetted uh, the entrepot uh, uh, Gazette, where I think uh, where you can uh, have uh, free trade uh, in certain specified ports. Uh, this could mean also this could be very important for the apparel industry. No more do they have to only source from Sri Lanka. They can bring in garments from uh, from other locations. They can add value in Sri Lanka. They can uh, mix it and they can you know uh, prepare the package and actually ship it right. Uh, to, to the store in a very uh, effective uh, and fast, fast manner. So uh, I think that's going to be important. Uh, some of the larger players, again, are trying to develop their own brands. Developing own brands in the apparel industry is a very, very difficult and uh, very capital-intensive uh, exercise, but they are trying. I, I know MAS is, is in India with a brand called Amante, and they are making some head roads. Uh, but, so I believe, again, by 2020, we could see Sri Lanka having some of its own brands out there in the market, even if it is in the South Asia or you know, uh, in the close proximity. Uh, buying apparel, the experience of buying apparel in Sri Lanka also, I'm sure, is going to change, change dramatically. There's going to be, uh, whilst there are a few sort of malls today, I'm sure by then there will be high-end malls or rather, you know, fairy extensive malls where you can go in there, you can buy brands, foreign brands, uh, but also Sri Lankan brands. Uh, and this, this, this will in turn, uh, uh, you know, uh, improve the, the quality of the apparel industry. From the logistics, I think we, we, we have seen, there's been much said about Sri Lanka's uh, positioning. Uh, it's a geographical positioning. On the, on the main trade lanes. Uh, so far, I think the country has been, I think most of our, most of our traffic that comes is actually transshipment traffic. Uh, I think 80, 85% of it gets actually shipped out. It's trans, uh, transshipment uh, traffic from India. But going forward, I think the, you know, by 2020 again, it could be a very different, different case. Sri Lanka could have a big future in um, uh, making it as a logistics hub. Where, where, where people would use the country to, uh, to, to store their, store their uh, uh, products for distribution in the region uh, and bring with it you know, various uh, value additions. So there's a lot, lot of uh, uh, potential, especially with the developments in and around the ports. There's a, the, the, I had a figure like $10 billion is what they're hoping to develop just in, inside the ports. In, uh, you must be all familiar with the developments in the South Port uh, and, and in the Colombo Port in general, and of course the Hambantota Port. So all these investments will make it uh, 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 really interesting for people who are looking to base their operations in here. 
the, 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 the free port operation also is something that, uh, that the government is trying to uh, take forward. We, uh, you know, we've seen how ports like uh, Jebel Ali uh, and even Singapore have developed this concept uh, and it is, a, it, it is a major part of the economy. So I think by then, Sri Lanka also could have its own place, uh, its, its own offering in this um, area. The, the oil and gas sector is something that uh, uh, still, is to, still is to come up. Uh, there have been some hopeful signs that there will be, that, that we will have commercially viable uh, uh, exploration uh, coming up. Uh, I think there are already firms operating. I think the possibility of generating gas uh, in the next few years is something that is, you know, fairly certain. But going that that in the, if that if that industry develops, that could uh, totally change uh, the country's prospects. And with it, there will be a whole new set of logistics needs that comes in order to uh, cater cater to the oil rigs, cater to the exploration. Uh, there will be a lot of. Uh, opportunities in this area. The Knowledge Hub, of course, I think I'm sure many of you here will be more familiar with that. But um, I think uh, there are so many, Sri Lanka has, uh, after the UK, I think we, we produce the largest number of uh, finance professionals. Um, so, you know, we should use that knowledge, I'm sure, to, uh, to capitalize on it and to offer high-end uh, outsourcing solutions to uh, uh, to people um, of course i think we need for that we need we need uh, high quality uh, educational institutions perhaps by 2020 we might have maybe not an ivy league but we may have a big university come in and set up here uh, and uh, with that there would be uh, maybe uh, research capability and other capabilities coming into the country that we could then use to develop this industry. Already the country has achieved a fair amount of accolades for its outsource, outsourcing, outsourcing business. Uh, and I'm sure going forward, we would see, uh, we would see that becoming a major player uh, in, in, in Sri Lanka's economy. So my message to those of you who are, I, I understand that many people from the audience are actually people from Sri Lankan who, Sri, uh, uh, Sri Lankans living overseas who may be here on vacation or you know, whatever, and you've taken the chance to attend this conference. So my message is really don't miss out. I think Sri Lanka's future going forward is, is it's absolutely clear for those of us who have struggled over the last 30 years and not done so badly here. I think the, the, the message is really that we are in for the ride of our lives. So I think uh, the, when especially in, uh, during a time when things out there in the West and in, uh, in other countries are getting difficult, I think there are tremendous prospects. So let me, let me just take this opportunity um, uh, just to say that whilst I know the program is titled uh, Work in Sri Lanka, I think even if you are not, even if you don't come in and physically work in Sri Lanka, there are many, many, many ways for you to interact with your motherland and to contribute to Sri Lanka's progress, and of course, for your own benefit. Um, one of the one of the big big things I think that that we stand to gain from from people coming overseas and and and, and starting here is actually the uh, uh, in the range of uh, entrepreneurial activity. Uh, what what we benefit from when people come here and start a business, start you know get something going, I think uh, that uh, that that creates tremendous value. Uh, for the country at large. If, if we take our own, our own business, uh, I work in a company where, where, uh, which is in healthcare, and we are trying to develop uh, a presence in uh, pharmaceutical manufacture. But one of the big things that we lack is we don't have any scientists here. So for people like scientists, engineers, uh, and other uh, people who have gone overseas and um, you know uh, had the experience of working which whether it's large multinationals or or other companies I think though it is it is I would say that type of talent which really the country needs in order for us to develop so if you're living overseas and you don't really want to make the move out here 
There are other ways that you can engage. You can, you can help Sri Lankans get access to markets, maybe by being a local representative or an agent or just doing a part-time thing. Um, you can consult for Sri Lankans. I think we would even, uh, even if you don't, uh, uh, even if you're not here full-time, I mean, if you come over here, maybe as a non-executive director in an organization or you're working as an advisory capacity, I think the knowledge is what is most important. The work ours, we can have, I mean, we can throw bodies at these solutions, but that high level knowledge uh, is really invaluable for us. Uh, many of you will have contacts overseas, networks overseas. So this is something that is really difficult to access. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, you can use those contacts and networks in order to engage with your country. Uh, Sri Lanka's real estate, I'm sure, is going to see a boom, not only in Colombo. Uh, the highways are opening up new localities, uh, and there are leisure destinations coming up. So investment in real estate for Sri Lankans, or it may be for people who are keen to invest in their hometown, I think that, that, that again is something that uh, offers uh, a lot of upside. Or just support a charity. There's a, there, I mean, there's a lot of need in Sri Lanka uh, for, uh, you know, especially for the marginalized communities. So, you know, if you've made your money out there and you want to, you know, give something back, a great way to do is come and support a charity. And through that engagement, maybe you will, you will it will lead to other things. Uh, and that is also a good way to go. And of course, last but not least, enjoy your holidays in Sri Lanka, bring your friends, uh, uh, and bring people who might have an interest in this country and who might, you know, because one of the things that we see, I mean, I take Chogam, for example, when we participated in the business forum there, people were just amazed. I mean, they said, when we came to Sri Lanka, I mean, we, we thought, you know, this place has gone through a very difficult time, and, but we are really amazed at the country. So one thing that you can be sure is if you bring, uh, if you bring friends out here, there are very few cases of, I find, where people go back disappointed. More often than not, they are surprised and they are like, wow, we never thought Sri Lanka was like this. Um, so this is my last slide, uh, and this is more just uh, you know, putting up some ideas about, uh, so how, how we can, because it's not enough to, not enough to wait for people to come and uh, work here. I think we have to do our bit in reaching out to them. Um, I think um, from the state and from, from those of us in business, reaching out, engaging with the diaspora, and uh, using their knowledge and networks to come in here, engaging with people who have maybe recently migrated but, but who still, you know, still have lots of contacts back here in Sri Lanka. And last but not least, engaging with students who are going there. I think the message should be go there, have an education, get some experience, but at the end of it, come back. There are perhaps going to be more opportunities here than there are going to be out there. Um, for, for many people, even people who recently migrate, retaining that pa Sri Lankan passport, I think, is a very important thing. So perhaps we can make it easier uh, for people, although they have chosen to live overseas, perhaps we could uh, make it easier for them to retain their passport. Uh, India has something called OCI. Some of you may be familiar with it, but it, it recognizes people of Indian origin. And it gives them certain benefits in terms of, like they don't need visas to come back, or they can open bank accounts, they can invest. So similarly to that, if Sri Lanka, uh, um, and I think we have, I don't know, I, I don't know the exact number, but a million, two million people uh, residing overseas. Uh, with, uh, you know, so, so uh, and, and like for a small country with 20 million people, that's a big number. So if we could find a way to reach out for those people and give them something, some special uh, treatment uh, for them, so that they look at Sri Lanka as their, their, their preferred source of uh, uh, investment and uh, uh, you know, if there was something, something back home for them. I think that would be interesting. As I said, investment in real estate. Um, and yeah, I think I've touched on this, encouraging intellectual elites. And from that, I meant scientists, doctors, other, other professionals who have gone out there, or even businessmen who have gone out there and uh, created value here, there to come back here and uh, uh, give back uh, to the country. Uh, and I think what would be really interesting is we, we, I don't know whether maybe a suggestion 
for the organizers whether is it possible to have a database of Sri Lankans who are living overseas. So for companies like us, let's say we're looking for you know, um, a scientist who has worked uh, in the area of tuberculosis or something like that, or whether it's uh, an expert uh, you know, who knows how to run a boutique spa. So if we could, if we could have the, that, that type of database, then it makes it easy for, for companies to reach out and to try and you know, engage in a contact and see how they can contribute uh, to our development plans as we go forward. So that's what I have to say, and uh, um, thank you very much, uh, and enjoy the conference, which I hope will be very uh, fruitful.